Before starting of the program, I would like to request Mr. Abdul Hadi, Manager of Admissions, for the recitation of Holy Quran and Naat. <laughs> Mr. Abdul Hadi. Well, ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Our session is about to begin. Thank you for your time. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, faculty, alumni, and students. Assalamu alaikum. I am Rohir Indikhab, your host for today. This seminar is about engagement strategies to increase student experience. For this manner, I would like to request Mr. Naveed Mughal, the student provost, Greenwich University. Please come on the stage for welcome address. Thank you very much. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ladies and gentlemen, Greenwich family, Mr. Raad Munir, Assalamu alaikum and a very good evening to all of you. Firstly, Raad Sahib, welcome to Greenwich again. Um, we are more than pleased to have you with us this evening. I'm sure there will be numerous memories to be pleasantly nostalgic upon, and it is always a pleasure to see you. The importance of today's seminar is something that does not need to be highlighted upon. It is understood that it is immensely important to have that relationship between a student, the institute and its representatives. So I hope we can take the most of this seminar and learn to be better positioned to help our students. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nabeet Mukha. Alumnus experience share karne ke liye, I invite Karunga, Greenwich. ke bahut saare stars hain, aap bhi stars hain, jo upcoming stars hain, wo bhi saamne baithe hain, jo stars jagmaga rahe hain, चमक रहे हैं उनमें से एक स्टार हैं सुहेल अमीन साहब सर आपको इनवाइट करेंगे एंड ही इज द सीईओ हाउस ऑफ अमीन सर प्लीज कम ऑन द स्टेज एंड लेट्स स्पीक अप अबाउट द सेमिनार मतलब आई आई मीन आई वुड बी टू आई वुड बी टू बिग इफ आई वुड स्टार्ट टॉकिंग अबाउट द सब्जेक्ट इटसेल्फ टुडे व्हिच आई थिंक रॉस सर शुड बी टॉकिंग अबाउट एंड आई शुड नॉट यू नो डाइवर्ज इन दैट Uh, कुछ राज साहब के बारे में बताऊंगा जो नए बच्चे यहाँ बैठे हैं उनके लिए हम तो वी हैड आर टाइम विथ हम एंड ट्रस्ट मी यू गाइज आर नॉट लकी बिकॉज ही इज नॉट विथ यू कहा अभी होस्ट ने कि हर टीचर uh, का एक रोल होता है कुछ टीचर्स ऐसे होते हैं दे है इम्पैक्ट ऑन योर लाइफ Raat Sahib is one of them, and we are very fortunate that he was with us throughout. Thank you, Mr. Amin. It's my pleasure to great joy to welcome Professor Dr. Rahat Muni to the seminar Engagement Strategies to Increase Students' Experience. Please, we welcome you, Professor Dr. Rahat Muni. All right, so thank you very much, uh, everyone. and you have to bear me for next 25 30 minutes all right after that uh, we'll have a quick photo and um, what a interesting uh, introduction all right so perhaps uh, i don't deserve that uh, i'm part of uh, greenwich family uh, my friends are here all right so i used to be in this class i think uh, i perhaps laid the first uh, uh, bricks of this uh, 
industry long ago, 30 years ago. So we did SIBA 3 or yeah. 3 or 4, 4 or 9. Yeah, so uh, I still remember before I, I still start with this. Um, so I, I used to be in a bank, right? I'm a banker basically, by profession. This is how I started my career. And so I used to, you know, after, uh, in the evenings, I used to come here and teach. Um, and that's how my journey basically started from, uh, uh, what was that, Mujahid to here. So that's how it is. So I started the first class, perhaps, of this uh, uni. Um, and then the long memories, I'll keep on talking and talking on this. Perhaps uh, one day is not enough uh, to discuss with that. Uh, 12 nuggets, or uh, golden nuggets, all right, or 10, basically 12 secrets. And I'll cover a few of those secrets of engagement. You all are here to learn, all right? And you all are here to engage. When I say here, it means here at Greenwich, all right? So that's, uh, so you are looking at your career, you want to be a CEO of a company, or you would like to run your own business, and you want to be a CFO company, work for big four consulting firm like Deloitte or UI or any a similar body or mid-tier companies, that's what your aim is. Uh, you don't want, uh, you don't come here for fun, basically. You are here for learning. That's why your motive is. And that's where we care for students. So there is always a duty of care um, by us, wherever you are uh, in any educational institution, is that we, we basically craft you <laughs> so that you become a successful person. That's why engagement comes. So we at Mupari University we really care for students um, so that they shine out. Because since we get students from 70 different countries and they have different learning styles, all right? I move around the world, that's my, my job, all right? So mostly I'm on a plane. Um, and we have students from Pakistan, very bright, smart, all right? kids in a classroom ask questions. Whereas if a student coming from China is completely different. Learning style is different. They memorize things, right? Rock learn things. Japanese students are different. All right, their style is different. They don't ask questions because it's a, it's a disrespect asking questions actually in Japan, all right? So they don't do that, all right? So, so engagement is so critical that you understand learning styles of, of the audience which sits in front of you and you engage with them, all right? So there could be a list of 140, 150 different types of, of um, engagement strategies which you follow. Maybe you pick just few. To me, perhaps with my research and my experience, perhaps these are the top 12 strategies which you follow, all right? So the first thing is, Everyone would like to be Justin or uh, Mark. That's what you want. That's what your age is, all right? I mean, someone in the age of 18 and 19 became billionaire. Uh, someone in the age of 20, 25 again become billionaire with a Facebook. What is that 28, 26, 16, 17 is a teenage a kid, basically a kid, all right? A billionaire, all right? So your generation, your generation, I'm saying is, now Justin is older than you. Your generation is basically this generation here. Your expectations are always different. You are 24 seven. The most of the time you send, spend is on your phone. 76% of your time in 24 hours is on your phone. You're so much engaged. It means we have to use that tool to engage you, all right? The moment we ask you to open a book, you'll say it's a boring stuff again, same accounting, same finance, same marketing, same management, same teacher, all right? Uh, boring stuff, all right? So you won't come in a classroom. That's what it happens. It means we have to have such tools or frameworks around uh, uh, the uh, units or subjects we, we teach that engages you so that you have best possible experience, all right? So, um, we um, uh, try to have all those strategies in place. So this is a message for the teaching staff also, those who follow those ones. 
Um, this is a common problem of us, all right? So you all, if you honestly you reflect on this, every house, every home, whenever even here you're in a uni here, uh, one thing you do is always try to look for where the power points are, like your battery is dying, you know, surfing is slow, internet is slow, all that problem. That's a common problem nowadays. Back in the 80s, um, I uh, basically uh, taught a thing to the students that was that's uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. You all have studied that, all right? That's an early 80s, uh, all right? So you all, perhaps at the time when I taught here, Maslow was even uh, a young, in a uni, uni boy, all right? But later on, he gave that theory. So what he said was, there are different levels of needs. And in those different levels of needs, the lowest need and the most common need of every person is basically physiological, shelter, clothing, everyday need. That's what you need, food. But now, that theory has changed. And that theory is, Wi-Fi is a basic need of everyone. Okay, Wi-Fi is a basic need. So it means that sense of, of um, uh, achievement has also changed. Means the old theory of 1980s within uh, three decades or two and a half decades have also changed. By the way, Wi-Fi was invented by Macquarie University. Okay, um, and so we are researching that the top top research which we undertake. So in everyone's student's pocket, you find uh, a phone with the Wi-Fi or with a laptop with a Wi-Fi, all right? So that is your basic need. So 61% of you, this Gen Z here, maybe um, most of you have crossed that generation also, they would, you know, would like to have more and more careers. So you get bored from routines. So what you do is, basically, you want that, that you want a change in your career. How many times? 17 times. 17 times, okay? That is the, now the common expectation people will do. Um, my, the time when my dad was working, perhaps he started with a company, in 40 years he finished in the same company, all right? Same one year experience, 40 times he repeated, that's what he learned in the whole of his life. All right, my time, perhaps I worked seven, eight companies from banking, from bankers active to state bank, and then to World Bank, to uh, New South Wales government in Australia, to you know, uh, uh, different educational institutions. So around five and six. But your age, which is coming is 17. That's the average expectations. So when it is 17, it means you'll grow through with 17 different experiences. That's all basically the expectation and the requirements are. So what does this uh, is and why I want to showcase this. Basically, it shows a different skills you require. So if it is one company you read, you just need one type of skills over 40 years. But if you move around 17 times, then 17 different skills you would be needing. 17 different types of skills and industries. So five careers, 17 different types of roles you will perform. That's what the research is, and that's what it happens there. So rule number two is your employer wants everything from you. All right? So if, um, you know, um, these alumni sitting here, the CEOs and CFOs and owners of different companies, if you send your CV, and how much you know employers uh, spend on the CV? Anyone, any kid, I have a prize for you if if you answer me. How much time they spend? On an average CV? Yes. Less than two minutes. Yes. Less than two minutes? Four seconds. Six seconds. All right? Four to six seconds. That's it. So your, your life, okay, would be determined in four to six minutes. It means your CV has to be so powerful that you express your brand in such a way, and then, you know, employers say, wow, this is the one, you know, you are the one I need. It means the first thing is that once you knock that, and then you enter into this. That's why what happened is, we focus on skills. 
and the students who learn skills, they are more successful than those who spend more time on acquisition of knowledge. So what is the knowledge? Knowledge is you open a book, you read, uh, you know, economics, micro, macro, difference, price determinations, you know, all those sort of things. They are good. You know, I'm not saying you don't need to learn, but that comes second. So what is first? Your skills, okay? Your skills. And that's why we talk about work integration and all that sort of stuff. And the idea is, is that you are more and more skillful. So if you look at here, is um, when employer says that employers look at everything what they want within four, five, six minutes, all right? Within four, five, six minutes, they will determine whether you are the right person who gel into the culture of your organization. That is very, very important. If you want, then they will not hire you. It's very important. Life out there, outside this room is very competitive. If you want to compete in a global world, then it is more competitive, all right? Especially if you're in US or Canada or Europe or, or in Australia, it's highly, highly competitive. Even, I'm not saying in Pakistan it's not, it's highly competitive in nature. So you have to be at, uh, at that level. <coughs> now, rule number three is when you formulate strategies, your cabinet is full of trophies, all right? So this is a cabinet here where I'm showing you just few trophies. So what does this mean? This means whatever you learn here, all right, and whatever way you use to engage, then who cares? And so what? That is a question. All right, so what you have learned? And who cares for that? It means that someone else out there in the market is the one who acknowledges that acknowledgement in education terms, it's called as accreditation. That is called as recognition. That is called as endorsement. So in the world, you know, people endorse your, your uh, activities and whatever work you do in a classroom, all right? That is very, very important. So you look at this trophy, that's all we have. This is one actually page I'm showing you. There are 10 different pages from and WSCSB is in America, to UK, you, you name it. In Australia, Australian Chartered Accounting, CFAs, you name it. I am in, in US. All that, you know, they acknowledge wherever you go, and it's a mark of endorsement that your qualification, your degree, your skills are matching to the, to the world standard. The other thing is um, and co-op activities and the strategies which you use to engage. So what does this mean, co-op? Co-op means that when you work, uh, when you uh, uh, study here, you try to have some work-related activities. That is co-op, all right? Means you work. So, so when you work, you at the same time earn. Like in our case, in our students, when they are in undergrad and do this co-op program, work integrated learnings, they earn about sixty to seventy thousand dollars per year. That's what it is. All right. That's uh, is when because Macquarie's location is is such a large that we have thirty companies within campus. We have three hundred companies outside campus. Means the university with its own hospital, university with its own train station, such a large setting. And we send all our students there, they shadow uh, senior executives. And that is called as co-op, all right? And cooperative program, basically. That's where the work integration comes. So these three pillars, which are very important, that you learn in a classroom, then you work with someone, all right? And then you earn at the same time, all right? It's beyond internship. I'm not talking about internship here. Internship is exactly different, maybe a crap nowadays, because nobody believes on, on internship. It doesn't add any, any, any value. So that is, is a accounting class, all right? Now, does it look like an accounting class? No, all right? This is Shadwings. That is Quo, where students go and learn, all right? This is accounting class, finance class, all right? Where, so this is a student, not a teacher, all right? Sitting in a class. 
So we, like in first year accounting, you know how many students we have? Over 2,000 students, just in one subject. All right? So over 2,000 students, we have to teach them. And we have a theater like 600 students theater one class. But simultaneously, we live stream all the classes. Students in a bus, in while cooking food, uh, uh, on a beach, on you know they're at the work. They're listening their their lectures. So 600 in a classroom, and remaining 1400, 1500, 1600, maybe more. Like in statistics class, we have 2,500 students in one class. So that is the size, and then we have to have engagement with them. That is is again another class. That these are the students. We are uh, in a classroom. These are industries they are exposed. The other thing is uh, in engagement strategy. Is fourth one is the strong culture of the students' school. Especially this is for for the faculty which we have. Is how you support your students. For instance, peer support programs like your alumni come here and engage with students. That's very very important because. You know, on average, 30 years of experience sitting here. They come and they share their knowledge, you know, what they have seen ups and downs when they started their career. And that's the picture I'm showing is, that's what they, they are doing. So peer assistance is also 30 year students, you know, after the class, they teach the second year students. Second year students, you know, they engage with the first year students beyond mentoring and they have. So there's the mentoring opportunities which you know we do not only as academics but others also. The other engagement strategies are career and employment support. Not only at a local level, local level means at a at a school or faculty level, but at a university level also, you know, career fairs and careers organizations they come all the time within campus, not one off, but all the time and you engage with those. Like with in on my net, I have over 250 companies on my net where uh, I send my students. Companies that ask me all the time, send us students, because there's a big demand for accounting and finance students. How it comes? That is basically with the, with the career uh, support, all right? And then we have some other resources available, and this is how you uh, engage. So you bring all these things in, in a classroom. The fifth one is the opportunity to connect with the future employers through degree programs, and extracurricular activities. And all these I've listed basically what happens and then what the institutions should be doing. And with that, what happened is more and more engagement with the, with the students' uh, uh, activities. Because what happened is the employers, when they look at, look at the employers, they say that this is an institution where we get best possible students. I think Greenwich had that name and still have that name in the market where the quality you know, prevails and the quality is, is there. Because I've seen this institution from very grassroots level, uh, you know, coming up uh, from a small to to big one. That's how uh, it is. So engaging externally and engagement internally also. Uh, Ramla, if you just tell me five minutes before. Um, so rule, one rule is Breaking that monotony, all right? Now you all are sitting here. Now this is a plain vanilla sort of, uh, you know, I'm giving a lecture. But when you have 600 students or 2,000 students in your class, how you manage that? I think that is very important. Uh, it's it's a running a company, I'm telling you. 2,000 students means one super lecturer with 60 different, you know, uh, teaching staff and managing like a company, all right? 2,000 students, they are not even sometimes a size of you know, a university, okay? So as it's one, one class. So what we do is, is in engagement, there's a lecture going on, live streamed, and then they move into, into syndicates, they move into seminars, they move into, into tutorials, various activities. That's why they learn. All right, in a small settings. There might be uh, one hour plus two hours, or two hour plus one hour here, or 1.5 to 1.5 means three hours of total activities which we provide. Because we, th we think that beyond 
beyond three hours, students don't learn in a classroom. And even if we record, record, we just record for 15 to 20 minutes. That's the total, you know, your uh, uh, attention span. After that, you will just get bored and trash that uh, recordings. That's what it happens. All right. So you have to be very, very careful there. All right. So which class is this? This is again accounting and finance class. It's a game. They're playing and they're learning through games, numbers, debits, credits, financial statements. That's all uh, what it is. All right. I'll stop it here and um, with the knowledge matrix and skills matrix eight and nine. Um, so these are skills. So we did a, you know, a, 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 a research on this, that how many skills are there for a student to learn? Maybe a list of 140 different types of skills. Your teacher would come in a class and say, okay, you have to do this, 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 this. Long list, all right? There are six skills, basic skills for you. Remember, if you want to be successful in your life, even if you say, my dad has a business and I'm very successful, you're nobody, I'm telling you right now. All right. If you really want to be successful, then these are the six skills which you you need. All right. Number one is at first level is your communication and teamwork. Second is you should be able to solve problem and think critically, and you are ethical, and then at the same time sustainable. Information technology basically is uh, knowledge, and after this. One last slide, and I'll stop it here, is the knowledge areas. So why I'm not showing knowledge before the skills? Because skills comes first. That's where the universities, they do blunder. They focus on, on books more than teaching skills. In fact, it's more and more skills which are important if you want to be smarter in, in, a, in, a, in a classroom, all right? Now, here, we do teach these plain vanilla, if, uh, all these sitting in front, they would know the financial accounting, management accounting, and I was used to be the one hammering all the time, all right? Um, but that's what it is. But at the same time, units like blockchain in accounting, nobody would have perhaps heard of this. Big data, cybersecurity, business advisory, you name it, all these things are there, okay? And these are the are the knowledge areas of future. All right, gone those days when you used to learn sort of a, a basic accounting concepts, basic management accounting co concepts, um, uh, or a basic finance concepts. That's something which you can learn. But when you come in a classroom, you want something else. So what is that something else? Those are basically, these are the skills which you want to learn. If it happens like this, then you are very, very successful. All right? Tenth, your your teaching strategies. So there are four pillars in uh, three pillars here. Okay, what you do, and there's one thing which you might have seen is experiential learning. You learn by by experience. Okay, that's a new style of learning. It means we have moved away from a classroom now. All right, you experiment, you experience. Okay, that is completely different where you are basically in a learning mode, simulations, for example. All right. You, we give you a situation where where you become part of the board, right? Sitting and, and making decision on product. All right? That's what simulation is. So various activities they are written here. That's how you perform. And matching to that would be your assessment tools. And these assessment tools support all your learning outcomes. So we did a research on this, we published in top quality journals that how you engage your students. There would be many activities perhaps you're doing, but at the same time, there are many activities which we learn. Our focus when we do students is on reflections, a lot. Whatever you do in a classroom, you reflect on that. Whatever concept you learn, you reflect on that and write 500 words, for example. Present 500 words. For instance, when a PhD student comes to us, when they finish their PhD of four years, they write around, around 300 pages to you know 120,000 words and so on, big thesis, publish three papers uh, in top journals. We ask them to stand here for three minutes and present your PhD <coughs> and defend. That's where you know you your skills will come out. 
in three minutes, you have to present that what exactly your research topic is, all right? How you uh, uh, collected data and what are your findings and how your findings are different from existing research. That is what it is expected. That's why you need to have these types of tools available. So um, the last strategy is, is on the, with the impact. So I can show you, like this is, we call it week zero. So basically your week one is when the day a class starts. But you start with your engagement with minus one week, minus uh, two weeks, or zero, right? At the start, you're engaged with them. All right, let's take questions. This was a day long presentation, but I thought uh, to keep a smile on your face so that we finish in 20 minutes. Any question? I have Students, any question? So, I have a ticket to Sydney if anybody who asks a good question. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, why not change the whole education teaching system rather than just telling people that skills are better than knowledge? So, why just giving knowledge to students and just give them some skills and then leave them in the competitive market? Good. Anyway, question is good, but not of that level. <laughs> All right, where you get a ticket or win a ticket. But I'm happy to buy a copy for you. All right. Um, um, the whole education system has changed. This is a change education system. All right. We expect students learn. So what they learn? They learn skills. What you have asked me is a skill. You have not asked me a knowledge question. It's a skill question, basically. That's what it is. All right. So when interview happens uh, in a modern setting now, I don't know Pakistan because I left Pakistan very long ago. Interviews, we never ask questions. I'm talking big fours, the, the world's largest employers in the world, all right? They never ask you and come and tell us the difference between management accounting and, and, and financial accounting. Nobody would ask. It would be a foolish question ever, all right? So you'll sit in, in a group form maybe in a digital form, and you'll be a topic, and then you'll speak on that topic. And that topic is not going to be, uh, be on, on knowledge related, but maybe a future profession. So I'll give you one minute and talk about future profession. We want to uh, learn about your understanding. So what happened is the skills would come first, right? So I'm not saying that you move away from knowledge altogether. For knowledge, there's a library there. Now, there's so many books here in your library, all right? And now, these books are also now moving into digital books, all right? Means I told you, on your phone, 76% of your time you spend, it means your book is there on your, your iPhone, all right? Or Samsung or whatever, you know, tools or tech, uh, 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 phones you use. That's what your school is, that's where your university is, that's where the lecturer basically is, all right? So classroom is very, very important, but when you want to start your career, you build on your skills, all right? And examples which I have, I've shown you, they are skills examples. Tell me anyone, you take examples of um, um, iPhones, for example, all right? Uh, innovations, Microsoft innovations, they're all based on you know, because people were street smart. And for a very small uh, basis, uh, skills, and they built on those those skills. And automatically it is, on a vertically, you, know, you learn with the knowledge. So that's how it goes, all right? And the previous model was more of a knowledge and then skills. It goes, the central pillar of your learning is now in terms of skills, all right? So if you're not good, in skills, you won't even, you know, learn knowledge. For example, you don't understand how to read and read effectively. That is a skill. But if you don't understand that, you won't be able to learn knowledge also. You got me? All right, so I'll buy two copies for you, definitely. <laughs> anyone, anyone? No, just an observation. Yeah. I think, uh, Coming from this family, I think we're going back to the old days where uh, our, our elders used to teach us how to actually acquire skills and then we used to employ those skills. And uh, of course, I mean, so, some of our, us would go to college or 
Uh, my, my parents probably just never went to a college. Uh, they did go to a college but not to a university. But those skills that they acquired came in handy. And, and they were probably more successful than we are today. So I think we're going back to the age old, uh, I will probably take that liberty and say the Gujarati style yeah. of doing business. Exactly. Or so, uh, top six, uh, you know, uh, richest people in the world, out of 10, they don't have any university qualification. You got me? Richest people, I'm talking about, you know, 10 billion plus. All right, so I think, I don't think the Pakistan's even financial budget is of that size. <laughs> yeah. Sir, uh, don't you think things are now moving so fast that from first knowledge, then skills, now it's more achievements? Because companies are now looking, saying, okay, you have a skill, so what? We are interested in saying how you're going to utilize these skills. What have you achieved? Because it's one thing to have knowledge. It's another thing to use it. It's one thing to have skills. It's another thing to, to use it. So now companies, I think, are more looking at achievements rather than skills. And it's really fast moving. Do you agree with that? Yeah, absolutely, I agree. So that achievement is a skill. Right. Remember that that achievement is is a skill. All right. So so uh, how you have achieved and how fast you have achieved. Right. That is is important. So skills cannot be ignored. Clear? You understand what I'm, I want to say? So knowledge is there. I'm not denying that knowledge is not important. Right. Knowledge is important. Means in my students, I have thousands of students. Right. Not only from Greenwich but all over the world. The smartest people uh, and the, those who have achieved in their life in a very short span of time. Right? Me, I have one of my students, he's a New York Stock Exchange, he earned 30 million just in one year, and he said, Thank you very much, I'm not going to work the rest of, the, of my life. Okay. One, skills. All right? So he met me in a New York Stock uh, 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 Airport, he was there, he knocked me from back and said, Oh, where are you going? I said, I'm going back home, Sydney. All right. And uh, I said, what are you doing? I'm retired, a kid, you know? Young boy of um, uh, 18 years, 19 years. He said, I'm, uh, I'm done. I got a beautiful bango of 15 million here in, in LA, and uh, you know, I'm spending life here. I've earned a lot, actually, it's very serious. That's what uh, it is. The smartest ones, I'm saying. Sir, sir, I like that. Achievement is uh, a skill. I think that's true. Sir, you said, you said the achievement is a skill, but then that achievement is also through a skill. Yeah. Obviously, that's what I want to say. All right, I'll take one more question because um, I don't want to. Yeah, yeah. Um, beautiful presentation. Um, my concern, basically, uh, that is there is how we could bring out those uh, engagement skills within our country, our community, as such. Just a small observation. Uh, you're absolutely right in saying that uh, skills are important. How would you feel which level those skills need to be introduced? Is university the right level for skills to be introduced? I personally feel what we learned um, or what we learn in the schooling area is where our skill set, basic skill set is developed. So uh, when we're talking about uh, universities, don't you think we are a, a bit late in introducing skill sets that are uh, going to be there? Yeah. So in in Australia, okay, let me explain, and this is how it works in, in, in uh, US and in other part of the world, modern, I'm talking about developed worlds. In Australia, we have AQF, Australian Qualification Framework, and there are different levels, level one, two, three, four, nine, and 10, okay? So it means that from level one, which is small kid born and gone into a school, that from the skills starts. So that framework is all about skills. And then they come on the knowledge areas. And seven is bachelor's degree, and the nine is a master's degree, and the 10 is the PhD. So all levels have different skills. It means the lifetime you spend, you know, in a classroom or in a, in a in an educational setting, which is a very low level, to a university level, you learn. Because there is no college in, in Australia or in the US, with there are no, you know, as such colleges. From school straight, you go to uni. So that's where you take your skills there and then you learn at a high level. Thank you, uh, Rahat Mahir Saab. And I would like to request that uh, a thank you note and I will invite you 
अदनान सैयद एग्जीक्यूटिव वाइस प्रेसिडेंट हैं यू माइक्रो फाइनेंस बैंक के हेड ऑफ ट्रांजेक्शनल बैंकिंग है सर आई वुड लाइक टू रिक्वेस्ट प्लीज फॉर द थैंक यू नोट लेडीज एंड जेंटल अदनान सैयद अलैक्म राज साहब एल एम एन आई स्टूडेंट्स इट्स अ प्लेजर इट्स ऑलवेज अ प्लेजर कमिंग टू ग्रेनेज यू नो इट ब्रिंग्स बैक ओल्ड मेमरीज आई रिमेंबर वेन वी वॉक इन टू दिस कैंपस इफ आई एम नॉट बी सेकिन सोहेल एंड अथर इट वॉज आई थिंक मे और जून ऑफ नाइनटीन नाइनटी वन समथिंग लाइक दैट कंस्ट्रक्शन भी नहीं हुई थी सिर्फ ग्राउंड फ्लोर था लाइट भी नहीं थी और उसके अंदर हम लोग क्लासेस करते थे एंड आई थिंक इन द फर्स्ट वीक राहत साहब की अकाउंट्स टू वन की टू और टू की क्लास थी जो लेनी थी एंड लाइट नहीं थी एंड ही वॉज मोटिवेटेड इनफ बैंक की सिक्योरिटी से आए थे वी वो मोटिवेटेड इनफ सो वी वो वर्किंग टॉकिंग अबाउट हाउ थिंग्स हैव चेंज इन द वे ऑफ टीचिंग मैजिस्ट जो राहत साहब ने बताया वी आई थिंक स्टिल इन पाकिस्तान क्लास रूम मैथडोलॉजी पर ही चल रहा है वेदर इट बी ग्रिनेज इट बी आई बी है इट बी लम्स हम लोग आज भी उसी के ऊपर चल रहे हैं आई थिंक वी नीड टू इवॉल्व एंड पीपल लाइक राहत साहब विद हिज एक्सटेंसिव एक्सपीरियंस एंड अस एज एलेवन आई आई थिंक वी शुड स्टार्ट एंड टेक दिस स्टेप नवीद आई थिंक वी शुड टेक दैट स्टेप कि वी शुड नाउ स्टार्ट गेटिंग पीपल इफ वी कैन डू वर्क फ्रॉम होम राइट वी कैन स्टडी फ्रॉम होम एज वेल राइट लेट्स start expanding models i am uh yes i am in evp right now but by the grace of god i was not my first job was what 1500 rupees when i started to work with interflow communications back in 93 after my bba i didn't need the money i needed the experience i needed the skill set like rahat sab said right so we need to work hard what we are today is because of our professors whether it be rahat saab it be bajwa saab it be uh, mrs uh, rosana khan it be durani saab maroom right it be uh, bilal rashid uh, in of marketing it be nas somro i mean i can go on and on uh, colonel faz of humanities i mean we still remember our professors we still respect them why do we do that we do that because they have parted their knowledge to us we can give back to you guys we are giving back to society as a ceo as a cfo as a, a banking employee right as a businessman all i'm telling you youngsters right who are in greenwich get up and make a difference rahat saab said was right ke the quality of students हमारे उस ग्रेड के नहीं है जो पहले होते थे वो क्यों नहीं है बिकॉज कंपटीशन बढ़ गया है यूनिवर्सिटीज के अंदर एवरीबडी वॉन्ट्स टू गेट अ बी बी एर एम बी ए डिग्री राइट थिंग्स आर चेंजिंग आई वॉन्ट टेक टू मच ऑफ टाइम आई वुड लाइक टू थैंक राहत साहब वेरी मच सर फॉर मेकिंग दिस एफर्ट ऑफ कमिंग एंड सोहेल थैंक यू फॉर अरेंजिंग इट राइट आई मीन इट वॉज इनिशिएटिव दैट सोहेल टोक फ्रॉम दी एल एम एन आई but all i want to say is that thank you very much where i stand today i owe at least 15 to 20% of my accounting skills you know to you thank you very much sir thank you very much thank you mr adnan sayed uh now i would like to request mentor of music society mr sajil and a student of music society please come on the stage and let's play some music <laughs> से क्या 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
मुझे लफ्जों की खुशबू आ रही है मुझे लफ्जों की खुशबू आ रही है मेरे खत को जलाया है किसी ने सहारा दे के छोड़ा है किसी ने अब जो हालत है न हंसता हूं न रोता हूं कभी मैं न हंसता हूं न रोता हूं कभी मैं मुझे पत्थर बनाया है किसी ने सहारा दे के छोड़ा है किसी एक आखिरी शेर मैं उन शीशागरों से पूछता हूं कि मैं उन शीशागरों से पूछता हूं कि टूटा दिल भी जोड़ा है किसी ने सहारा दे के छोड़ा थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू सजी बहुत सारी बातें